this YouTube video will be loosely based on Matthew 12:45. Okay, so then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than it itself, and they go in and live there, and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. So what I wanted to do is call this like, uh, what are you full of? I thought at first that, you know, if you if you sweep it dry, that uh, something comes along and uh, takes over. But what I've realized, oh, here it is. Okay, now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. And that's when it goes and takes these other spirits with him. So I'm thinking, well, what are you full of? I mean, if you're full of nothing, then something can come in and occupy you. So what is that full of? It's either baloney or it's good information. The charismatic movement is based on emotion only. It has partial truth like every other cult in the community. But what I'm thinking is all they had to do was kind of pay attention, listen, look, and read. I will say when my brain tumor was miraculously healed, I took the evidence that was supported by doctors and the medical community to Akash Sant Singh at Community Bible Church and also John MacArthur. Neither one of them would accept my testimony. Well, my friend, Allison Cook Baker, she did accept it, although she was the one that hissed when she first found out about it that it was of the devil. She's a charismatic kind of girl. So I want to take a look at some of the specific things that happened in her life and I will ask her, Miss Prosperity Queen, from whose hand did you receive your prosperity? Let's analyze it. I'll start kind of at the most recent thing and move backwards. So I played a song for Allison's wedding that I had written myself and when I saw who her best man was or who her future husband's best man was, my heart went into my stomach. I knew this was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, I didn't hold it against her. I kind of like tried to stay beside her. I was at her church, her and her husband's church, once a prosperity church, giving my testimony. They're one of the few places that allowed that to happen. And all of a sudden I started just singing as we are directed to do, just sing. Well, something happened to Allison. At that point, God told her, start reading. In other words, don't ignore his book. Don't ignore his commandments, his instructions. Don't have everything be about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Read the book. Well, I don't think that she did. If we take a look at where their wealth came from, her husband's wealth came from her. Her wealth came from her father. Her father was from England. He was an engineer. He was a good engineer. He lived in the best part of town. He used to take us out to Mexican food, and as he was laughing, the cheese was dripping out of his mouth. He left all of his money to his kids. So Allison was rich. It didn't come from her hand. I will say that she did go to school, and she became, um, you know, something kind of high in the school district community here, but she listens to people that kind of give her half truth and she refuses to listen to those who are going to say let's look at the bottom line of this prosperity movement now let's move into another avenue let's take a look at a billionaire let's take a look at whose work created that wealth and we will find out oh it was his what do you know about that it was hard work it was good ideas it was planning it was support in the right areas and directions it was it was uh full of common sense. It wasn't full of baloney. What I'm going to say is that God does provide for us, but he has a rule book of instructions as what we are to do in order to have this prosperity come into hand. I will say that Elon Musk is better than me because he cares about others more than I do. I'm trying to follow in his footsteps in that, but I've been ripped off and robbed by so many Akash Sant Singhs that I don't know if I can trust anybody anymore. I'm coming around to analyzing even relationships to go, hmm, are they based on truth or not? Are they based on actual true emotions or are they just based on selfish emotions where we can just reap as much as we can and don't worry about sowing, just reaping. So I'm going to reap away 
and I'm going to stay away from the Charismatics, from the Evangelicals, from John MacArthur, from the Reformed Theologians, and just have my little church services in Walmart. We walk around and talk to each other. We point out where things are. We talk about theological things and doctrinal things, and it's actually been a good thing. And that's it for now.